Uh, how do we know when a situation is calling for us to help the other person and when to refrain because by doing so we will be competing with Allah? How do we know when to help people and how to refrain so that we're not trying to show ourselves as competing with Allah This in reference to, I guess it could be anything but mainly with spiritual practices that in reference to spiritual practices and one trying to learn healing, it's more important because it's very nafsani to, to, to be interested in healing. A lot of people want to like superpowers, they want to go and the person to be cured from difficulties, hardships, everything to vanish. That's not for the sake of that person, that's the sake of their own nafs like a superhero movie. So the tariqah's training is that better to teach somebody how to heal and how to fish than to keep giving people fishes. So that's why the whole system is based on first come be a student, come learn our way, come learn the meditation, come learn all of the practices. So it's through the door of them feeling they're sick and they must seek a remedy because that's the way Allah operates. Sayyidina Musa was cold, hence Allah appeared as a fire. Had he been hot, he would have never gone towards the fire because he would say, it's very hot out here, I I, nobody goes to a fire if they're hot. So it's a law in attraction that Allah will put a, a condition, Ya Musabib al Asbab, Ya Mufatih Abwab. Allah puts your condition and then shows you a door that go to that door. So that condition is causing you to look for that. So when the shaykhs know that, that Allah is giving these conditions otherwise they wouldn't have found the channel. If they didn't have a certain difficulty or they didn't have a jinn biting their feet and coming after them, you think they would have found this channel? As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. No. So Allah put a condition on somebody for their training. So not to relieve it but to give them a training. That if Allah want to open something for a servant and says, go sit with them, they're capable of training you. Not to take it away because what Allah gives, Allah has to take. But to train the servant on how to build themselves, build their energy, build their health, build their mental health, spiritual health, all their practices, that's what's important. So everyone is given a condition in which to seek out a remedy. But when they don't understand, then people try to pretend like they're Allah where they want to give to everyone everything and take away the condition for what? If you didn't train the person and you only wanted to take away their difficulty, they go right back into that same difficulty and Allah wanted them to learn something otherwise Allah could have relieved them of whatever the difficulty was. So that could be with rizq, with health, with anything. Allah doesn't want you go somewhere and just pray, oh rizq will open, shaykh pray for me rizq opens, okay yeah here we go, no, no hundreds of millions are flowing towards you. You would be the most sickest pharaoh on earth 
But what Allah wants from the servant because of that condition, sit with them, they'll teach you how to have barakah in your life. And anyone sitting doing zikr, doing their practices, loving Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah is sending millions and millions of blessings upon their soul that they can't even imagine. You can't even cash one of those millions for all the wealth of this earth. So just by putting their zikr on, by putting their practices on, Allah is giving to them. Prophet is dressing and blessing for them. So if they sit long enough they begin to see their life is changing, everything is, is bountiful. They sleep good at nights, the energies are peaceful in their homes and for their families and for their children. While everyone is panicking they have a istiqam and a firmness, they have a clarity of light that emanating from their heart. So all of these are the bounty of Allah which He describes that go out and tell people of the kingdom and the bounty of Allah And that's the purpose, that's why we ask that when you do da'wah everyone, everyone has to to describe the bounty of Allah by doing da'wah. So take a link and share it and inevitably people come to guidance, they'll listen to the zikr, they'll start to attend the, the majlis, the associations and the teachings. And if their lives improves and their difficulties go away and they draw a nearness and a love to Allah and to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then what could be more blessed and more… Uh, more beautific than such things like that inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Can you please explain the reason for the last Wednesday in the month of Safar for us not to go outside and what kalam happens on earth? InshaAllah the teachings of Safar is a lot of hayba. We said that there's a tremendous majestic light and anytime you have a majestic light on a non-majestic earth filled with shayateen and bad character what's going to happen? It causes a burning, causes a difficulty, causes a, a an aggression. So similar to the full moon, the nights of the full moon there are immense lights emanating upon the earth in which the people came up with the expression called lunatic, lunation. Because of the tajalli of the luna, the moon, the energy was too strong for the inhabitants of earth and the bad actions they do. So imagine people are carrying all these these negative creatures on their being just from their daily interaction and these energies come and make everything agitated and aggravated. And they say crime goes up, aggression goes up, all these different difficulties go up. Why? On the full moon nights because the energy and the emanation that reflecting upon the earth is too much for the inhabitants of earth whom their practices are not strong and maybe not good. So that's the teaching from energy. Safar is a hayba month, is a month of majestic might in which Allah is dressing immense lights. These immense lights begin to dress everyone, bless everybody to become from Ashab al kaf so for Ashab al kaf you can imagine what Allah described. Let me pull up the app because… No, they don't have the Safar yet on there, let's look on Safar. <coughs> the 18. Nabi Rahmah and Al Fatah. So Allah going to open the secrets of Rahmah from Sayyidina Muhammad's 18th name, Nabi Rahmah, Rasulul Rahmah, and Allah's 18th Ismullah Al Fatah, the opening. So it means there's going to be an immense opening, and that's why the 18th surah, Surah Al Kahf, is the cave. So these tajallis that are coming, this is a tajalli of haybah. 
Subhanan alimul hakim. Glory be to the Lord who's all knowing and all wise. So, alim, ilm, and hikmah is coming down upon the servants because of the dress of haybah. When they enter into the cave, enter into these realities, these dress are dressing upon the servants. So, very majestic might, uloom and knowledges, and everything that we'll begin to talk about in Surah Al Kahf and the relationship with Sayyidina Khidr and Nabi Musa, Ashab al Kahf, and the realities of Ashab al Kahf. So, a lot of tajalli. As a result of tajallis, a lot of difficulties begin to come because everybody is surrounded by not so many good things, not so many good actions. So when majestic lights come they tend to make a conflict with non-majestic energies is the best way to describe it. So Allah's grace and might begins to dress and begin to wash away all of the difficulties that people put upon themselves. The last Wednesday then can imagine is a tremendous amount of tajalli coming down upon the earth. So when the servant goes into their cave on the last Wednesday, it's like entering into the cave to receive Allah's ni'mat and blessings and teaching for you that your best protection in difficult times is run to a cave. Means that when chaos comes onto this earth and people are running around like crazy people, run to the cave, seek refuge in Allah and retreat. And that was the example in Muharram of Prophet when he took Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq the Beloved into the cave, that they sought refuge in the cave from the people whom were wishing to harm Sayyidina Muhammad and that cave is where we are all entering and that was in Muharram Surah Tawbah verse 40 when the two had entered into the cave. That's the secret of Muharram that Prophet is taking these muhibeen and ashiqeen on a journey through the Qur'an. The Qur'an is pulling them in through Tawbah verse 40 they entered into the cave. By Safar they're actually in Surat Al-Kahf and Surat Al-Kahf begins to dress them on their dress towards this pilgrimage of realities. So has immense dress. Then Wednesday then is going to be very majestic lights and what happens then on dunya when the people whom are not of a majestic reality they begin to go upside down. As a result their devils are everywhere, everything is angry, lots of external difficulty. But for those whom are in the cave, very majestic and very beatific lights. That's the time in which to sit and meditate and to be dressed by its immense blessings. The difficulty or the fire of one may be a, a peace and a blessing for one someone else. That's what you learn from the reality of fire. Fire burns everything other than its fire. So those whom are entering a Divine fire of love and grace, they're already within the flame of that ishq. But for those whom don't have that love that fire seems very hot because it burns away all their dunya and that's what's the difficulty. But the one whom they're of that flame and they exist within that light and that love, they're dancing within the flame. That's when Allah through Sayyidina Ibrahim, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُكُنِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا that this is a servant of immense Divine love, how the fire is going to harm him? He is from the fire and as a result people looked and he was having a good time inside that flame. Because that which is existing from Allah's love, love can't burn it. Allah made the fire of their anger to be the fire of His Divine love and through Sayyidina Ibrahim into Allah's love of course he's in complete ecstasy, he felt like he was in paradise. But from the outside they were astonished, what the heck, what's he doing in there? He's not burning, he seems like he's doing something <laughs> inside the flame. So it it's, has a very deep reality. That's why to, to make our path based on this Divine love and Divine ishq and that Allah to be happy with us and then to, 
to do what Allah has asked of us as top priority and that we do it with love and sincerity and do it with the best of character and the best of grace inshaAllah. <clears throat> as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa How can the ones who can't speak Arabic be able to receive the teachings of the Holy Qur'an? Because the one teaching you doesn't speak Arabic. I'm your, your best example, I don't speak Arabic, I don't read Arabic. If you try to speak Arabic to me I don't have the slightest understanding of what you're trying to say. So we are considered ummi, we're not somebody taught by Arabic. This is not about that, ittaqullah wa alimakumullah that if you have a taqwa and a consciousness Allah will teach the servant. So that's why this knowledge is a ishraqiyoon, this is meant for a Western audience. We have very few Arabs except Muhammad is Arab, right? Why? It's meant for a Western audience, Eastern audiences, non-Arab uh, ajami because their, their sheet is, is plain. What they learn of the, these uloom will go into their heart as an understanding. So better to bring out realities on a white canvas. If somebody thinks they know something, what they think they know will block their knowledge, right? So we gave examples before. If we sit with certain people and say, describe for me what Rabb means, and those are Allah. So why what Rabb is Allah? So because it is. So it's not. All over the Muslim world, Rabb is just lordship and whom governs. So in your home you're called Rabbul Bayt, the Lord of my house. In your town you're called Rabbul Shar, the governor. So this was our history. But shaitan played with Arabic words for Arabic understanding people, as a result the knowledges were locked off, the realities were locked off for a great majority of the Eastern world. So Ajamis and few Arabs were sent to the west for the rising of the sun. So a time will come when the west and the knowledges of the west and safeguarded in the Western world will begin to illuminate the entire Eastern world. Because of their safety and because of where they're located they can teach the knowledges that Allah want to be taught of realities. So it's not about being fluent in Arabic, it's about having a sincere heart. When you have a sincere heart and you start with us, Immediately they can teach you what is alif and we'll go from beginning. Alif is the first letter, alif stands for izzat, might. So every time you see this alif this has to do with the might of Allah Much better than somebody who knows ten letters or think they know them and then entirely continuously trying to negate everything being taught and saying, no it's not that, it's this. So there's a hikmah and a wisdom and that's why we teach very slow that the website has all of the hurufs, the way they should be learned in the muqata'at and the abjad tables. All of that is designed and all these teachings are for Western audience so that they can come up and Western audience meaning those whom speak the Western language. You can be in Pakistan and you're considered a Western audience. As long as you can understand English and this teaching you're considered a Western audience. That you're familiar with the Western culture, the Western language, as a result it will be taught to you as something new and then enter into your heart and if you have an understanding of Arabic then you can make that to blossom even larger and better inshaAllah. But it has its own hikmah and wisdom, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As 
Sayyidi, what is the reality behind Sayyidina Bilal anhu, entering heaven first and Sirat al Mustaqim? I think we talked about Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi in the last few talks. So, alhamdulillah, I talked way above Sirat al Mustaqim. Why would you want to know what Sirat al Mustaqim? I told you from the Khafa and Akhfa realities. Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi reached Maqam al Ahadiyya that beyond Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Mustaqim is below Sayyidina Jibreel. That where you have to pass for Jahannam, we're not talking from that, we're talking into the realities of the Divinely Presence of Allah. So that's something that is not even understandable. The Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi is calling creation from the station of ahadiyya that the love he endured for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah dressed him to witness ahad and as a result he calls all creation from that maqam. So that has an immense, immense reality. That anyone whom has the love of this holy companion, when they do their dawah and call people to the way of Allah His madad and support supports them to call the souls from the realities of ahadiyya, from the essences of Allah that emanating into the essence of Sayyidina Muhammad and calling creation from their inner core of their reality. Not their two ears and eyes and nose but calling from their inner soul that come back into this immense ocean of realities. That's what Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi of many realities but what he gives as a gift to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad by just the act of loving, respecting and keeping the ihtiram and asking for their madad and their support. Said all the holy companions have immense, immense gifts. Look, Imam Ali Salam has tariqah gifts and the character gifts. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as Salam has the immense character gift and the tariqah gift, the realities of the full moon to make anyone who loves him salam, to become a full moon and represent to have the qamar and to be the full moon of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad. So the holy companions carry an immense, immense secret of this love and ishq from the world of light, not the, the world of form, from the world of light. And the world of light controls the world of form. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, if you keep missing your fajr and other prayers, what can we do? If you miss your fajr then try to pray it before you sleep and drink a lot of water so that you can make your sleep not to be so heavy and try to, you know, depending upon what your condition is. If you're staying up too late, go to bed earlier. Drink a lot of water throughout the night so that you have to keep waking up throughout the night to make wudu. It's okay if you make wudu three, four times throughout the night, you say, oh but my sleep will be light. It's exactly that reason is to train yourself to have a very light sleep and as a result then you're going to be able to catch your, your Salatul Fajr and Salatul Tahajjud inshaAllah. And then if not then you make istighfar and you, you pray at qada at the time that you wake up. But Again depending upon how you discipline yourself to sleep early and, and drink a lot of water so that you can awaken inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what blocks love? How can we unlock our love? At times it's flowing and at times it's completely blocked. Sometimes I can feel my heart and other times I feel numb. Yeah, it's not going to always stay in one condition, it's going to come like waves by the acts that we do, the character, the, the, the charity we give, the time that we give towards people, the salawats, the meditation, all of this is a foundation in which to build upon as a result of our acts and the, and the different amal that we do, those are what soften khushiya, give a softness to the heart. So dunya by its nature makes the heart to become hard. 
work, focus on work, focus on dunya, the heart begins to calcify. But as soon as we do our salawats, do our zikr, do our charity, uh, meditate and contemplate, it keeps the heart in a softness. And the tafakkur is the strongest, that when you're able to spend just a few minutes every day in contemplation, the light that reflects out to the heart of the servant has a tremendous light that burns away this calcification. And dhikrullah is like a cleaning of rust so that the heart doesn't become rusty from just the dunya and no zikr and no spiritual practices. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen in ashraf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa alihi wa sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqat al mashbandiyat al aliyya wa sayyir wa saudatina wa siddiqina al faa'ah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.